Hello, welcome to the video discussion on the Certified Digital Meteorologist, how to earn this certificate and what you need to do as part of diving into the AMS. So you have a background likely in, in digital meteorology, which includes anything on social media, maybe producing videos on YouTube or producing content on X or Facebook for your news station, or perhaps you're even a independent creator, you're an independent meteorologist, and you have clients that is based mostly in the realm of social media. So as, as, a, as a unique environment that you are in, it may be a little bit more difficult for you to earn certification in the past. But now that we have addressed that in the American Meteorological Society, you have an opportunity to be recognized for the awesome meteorologist that you are. And trust me, you are awesome. So what do you need to do in order to prepare for everything going on with the Certified Digital Meteorologist Certificate, okay? So this video, I'm gonna walk you through the websites you need to visit, what you need to apply, what background we're looking for, and also some great study tips and how to be prepared for the video, for the uh, test that you have to take in order to pass. So let's dive into some of the content. I will end this. And we start first with going to the AMS and learning everything about the certified digital meteorologist okay so this area right here is all about everything you need to know about the certified digital meteorologist seal uh it, as you can see we start off with the certified broadcast meteorologist program right a lot of what has been in place with the certified digital certified broadcast meteorologist program is in place for the certified digital meteorologist program so if you have already taken take or earned your cbm then earning your cdm is a lot easier because then basically all you, you already passed the test so now all you have to do is provide the content like what you uh, do on facebook how you have conversations on on x the video content and the text content you 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 provide on websites or on youtube itself so you send that in and we judge and go over it. and for the most part uh aside from anything that's outlandish like saying that there's going to be a category six hurricane or something ridiculous like that we when we judge these videos and this content we understand that there are some limitations on what you could put in there because of different types of contracts that you might be working with or as an independent meteorologist you may not have the access to everything that you have in a broadcast broadcast realm we take that into account believe me as someone who is part of the independent realm uh, i'm not going to have the capability of using a digital platform uh, like like they would have in ABC News. So we understand that. We take that into account. The key thing to remember is not the flashy graphics. It's the content. It's how you're talking to your audience and how you're sharing information. So let's go to a certified digital meteorologist. Here is the seal. Again, this is all AMS. Uh, a the A-M-E-T-S-O-C dot org. Okay, you can find all that here. Um, and you can also uh, easily just Google CDM and it'll come up very easily. So obviously there's plenty of respect and whatnot because you're, you're, you're separating yourself from the individuals that were trying to essentially scare people for content, for hits, for clicks. What do you have to be in, for, in order to earn your CDM? Well, you have to go to college and earn a uh, degree. Or if you were in the military, that's also uh, will get you uh through as far as a basic requirement um you have to have all the courses that involved in meteorology of course uh, my favorite differential and integral calculus and vector and multivariable calculus it's always fun um mesoscale meteorology synoptic meteorology this is all basics of what you would expect for uh, a degree in meteorology uh, so again 
you want to make sure that your degree has featured all this or if you are in the military that you have gotten all this training and provide that so it very much similar to what you would have for the broadcast uh, feature so you want to make sure you have that degree there's also you have to pass a multiple choice exam which we'll talk about in a moment and of course there is the application and fees now, cdm application is pretty straightforward if you're already a AMS member is $330 for AMS members, $660 for non-members. But if you're a meteorologist, you're already, you should already be a member. It's a great organization to join. Uh, to reapply, if you didn't pass the test or didn't get, get a uh, certification, it's $100 for AMS members and $200 for non-members. CDM exam fee is $60 for the remote proctoring exam, which is what we're going to be talking about. Uh, $75 for a, f a exam administration at U the United States testing facility, $85 for exam administration at international testing facilities. So in this case, most individuals will be doing the proctoring with the remote exam. So I will talk about what you need to do to prepare for that. Uh, if you do the administration at a location, it's pretty straightforward. Make sure you have your ID, uh, make sure that uh, you have a pencil and a piece of paper and uh, be prepared for a 100 question test, which is going to be fun. We'll talk about that uh, extensively. So that is what you need to do in order to earn a CDM. Uh, this is what you have to go through as far as your eligible, eligibility requirements and passing that test. Samples of work, pretty straightforward. Uh, you have different categories here, a text discussion, video discussion, that's about four points. Uh, and again, that it could include live streaming or recorded videos. Uh, try to cut it down between one and 15 minutes. Uh, going over 15 minutes is not the best thing. Again, you know, we understand that not everyone is going to have those premium uh, graphics. Don't worry about that. The key thing is the content, not the flashy graphics. And of course, with all graphics, you want to make sure that they are legally available. Okay, so make sure you follow all of the rules and bylaws. And there might be a question about that. As long as you have, you know, understanding what the contract is, depending on what content you're using, uh, you should be pretty good. Hard journalism stories. Again, not everyone is going to have a hard journal journalism story because you might be an independent meteorologist. So yes, you have this factor here. Um, so that let's say if you're working for a news station you um you're doing a story about climate change or you're doing a story about a heavy rainfall event or you're the one that developed the graphics this is where that would come in uh if you're not in, in a news organization this could fall under let's say uh overview of a significant weather event or explaining a significant weather event uh which can basically bounce in between these two. So again, journalism story on the impacts of a storm. This is a discussion of the storm, video discussion of the storm, details on the impacts of that storm could be here, your graphics, let's say a snow map or something of that nature here, and then social media posts. And again, this covers X, it could cover um, Facebook, YouTube discussions, uh, TikToks, any Instagram reels, the, the ability here is widespread. And the key thing to understand here is again, it's not just flashy graphics or flashy capability, but the, the content involved here. So what, what we want to look for is, Hey, are you providing information that is reliable, understandable, and portrayed to uh, the general public, or if you have a, a premium consulting type of setup, let's say you're a private, let us make sure that you let us know about that because you may be talking about some higher end meteorology that, um, that the general public may not understand, but you're being paid to provide that. So that's important to let us know if that's what you're doing so that we, we have a better understanding. So, Hey, look, if the content is a bit you know high level well you're being asked to provide that so make sure you tell us that 
And of course, this is how we create everything. And again, there's other categories too. The key thing is to uh, add up the points. Uh, and then um, we study based on the, uh, on the content you give, what our point values are. And again, we have different categories on here, category one, two, and three. Again, on category two and three, this is an explanation of what we're looking for. And candidate must score above a 3.0 average. Uh, so that way you have, uh, it's again, it's pretty fair. And, and a lot of the, and I have not yet come across anything. I do some of the analysis on this and some of the um, reviewing on this. I have yet to come across a two or one uh, submission. So uh, most of the time it's in this level here because all of you meteorologists are awesome. So don't forget that even when you have a bad forecast. So that is the overall theme on how to earn an SCDM. What about studying? Well, when it comes to a 100-question test, uh, let me put myself up here real fast. Uh, okay, if you're just out of college, the test isn't too difficult, okay? Uh, it really is. It has a lot of basic information that you, that it's in there, some uh, good information about uh, forecasting for thunderstorms, a lot of convective weather, skew tees, all that good stuff. If you've been out of college for a while, like I have, when, when I took the test, you probably haven't taken a test, even though it's a hundred question test in quite some time. So you want to take time to study. Now, I use uh, a lot of my old college books, right? Uh, this is uh, really, really dated, uh, but it still has great information, a lot of my old notes, and also I use some great websites. Now the AMS, and let me uh, go back here, provides outstanding resources on everything here on what will generally be on the 100 question test uh, some numerical weather prediction uh, analysis a lot of stuff from Jetstream. if you haven't checked that already i suggest you do uh, so there's a lot of great links here on some of the studying involved here uh, and, and a lot of the topics that are going to be on the test so that's your reference of course you have your ams glossary you want to go over i also suggest using a website called theweatherprediction.com. Uh, it's not going to have all your questions on there, but it is going to have a really good overview. It's an outstanding website so that I'd suggest you use. Anyway, even if you're not taking the test, just as a general overview, if you, you know, want to make sure you go over some of the uh, details about forecasting for, for a winter storm or you know, you're just going into the severe weather season. You want to kind of go over to skew T and go over some of those factors involved with forecasting for convective precipitation or tropical uh, development. It's a great thing you should always review anyway. And this is a great website. I've been using this for years and it always helps me out quite a bit with studying. But when it comes to this test, you want to take some time to study before you take the test. I know that you know everything there is to know about meteorology because you're forecasting every day i get it but when you're taking this test you're doing a hundred questions and we're going to talk about how you have to set up your environment to take this test but when you're taking it you haven't taken a test in quite some time and sometimes you overthink things or you might forget a slight detail or the way that the question is asked is slightly off like kind of a little bit of a tricky questionnaire so you want to take your time with the test, study a bit. I'd say anywhere between three to six months, you want to study before you take the test, and then you pass it. Now, when you're doing the test via the proctor, what you want to do is you want to make sure that your environment is set up correctly. So if you have a standing desk, you want to be sitting down. You don't want it elevated. And oh, by the way, turn off the standing desk. Yes, you do. You have to. Also, if you have various screens like I do, like this one right here, it has to be turned off and covered with a sheet, okay? So if you have anything that's in front of you here, aside from your own monitor or your laptop, you want to have that covered. 
if you have a laptop on your camera and that's what you're using to test because they're going to be looking at you while you're taking the test to make sure you're not cheating or anything you don't want to have any other cameras available you want to cover if you have an ipad or anything else out there you have to cover everything your desk you might have your favorite godzilla or you might have a picture of your wife that all has to be removed and cleared out right you want to have everything off your desk your desk is clear like as if it's a brand new desk in high school right so you want to have nothing on your desk you want to have that completely cleared out you also want to make sure that if you have any books in the back that you want to have those covered as well and you want to make it as sterile as possible you want to have four doors or should i say four walls uh, and a door no one can be anywhere in the area right so if you have a kid or you have a wife or anything of that nature um you want or, or, or anything else roommates they have to be out of the area they cannot be seen in the background walking around like going to the bathroom or anything of that nature uh because that will cancel out your test and then you have to take it again at another time uh, so you want to have it quiet and you want to have it uh, with nobody around and sterile, as in nothing here to distract you, nothing on your desk, no, no extra monitors, your monitors are covered and unplugged. So you want to have that all prepared before you take your test. Then you go into your test and they go through the steps. They're very nice people. They go over everything, make sure that everything's good. They check everything, like they check your, your garbage pail. They want to check to make sure there's nothing underneath your desk, underneath your chair. They check all that stuff. Don't worry, everyone does it, okay? And then you're ready to go for your test. And then take your time, okay? Don't rush, okay? You got about 120 minutes to take the test. Take your time, go over the questions. When you're doing the test, you're going to have the option of uh, selecting a question maybe you're not sure about uh, so you can highlight it and then come back to it uh, it's okay if you have a lot of those okay because again small details in the questions matter quite a bit make sure you go over that you'll be fine you take the test you pass the test you celebrate okay so I believe in you I know that you're going to be able to pass the CDM because you are awesome we look forward to seeing all your great content so that way we can overview it and then get you your CDM seal that you deserve. I hope this uh, helps out quite a bit and don't hesitate to ask questions if you have them. In the meantime, stay safe out there.